Welcome to lesson number five, tutorial two of our Python Turtle series. Um, we just go on a little bit of a tangent. Last tutorial, we were looking at the whole idea of um, conditionals, the if, um, else, if, and else. And we're going to learn a little bit more about conditionals today. We're going to learn, on this session, we're going to learn a little bit about conditional loops. Um, but to introduce that, first off, I want to run this little program over here, which is going to ask you for a random number. And I'm just going to also introduce you to a new library up here import random which is part of the python standard library and allows you allows the program to randomly choose things etc so the actual what we're going to be using here if you see this code i'm going to run through it using our debugging so you can see what happens so i import um i import python i import random and then i'm making a function up here which is getting the prompt which we know about getting our prompt that we did before um, which is making sure the number is actually an integer. We did that in our last um, tutorial. So you can see here how this will work is we got the number. So I go to the random library and we use rand int, which is here. And it's going to give me a random number of 58. So there's a random number between one and 100. So it chooses one at random and then it is going to um, assign that to number so if I view our variables you'll see that 58 is there so it then comes down is going to um, ask them to guess a number guess a number between 1 and 100 I'm going to choose 28 enter now it's going to check whether 28 is correct so check whether the guess is the so the guess which is 28 is that the same as the um, random number which is not 58 so that's false so it's going to say incorrect number and tell me what the actual number was which is all well and good now let's just run that again in such a way where i actually guess the number so guess the number between 1 and 100 i don't know what the variable is it hasn't told me so i'm going to say 90 and that was incorrect okay so you can see how that works it's a really simple thing and it's not really an exciting game because i can just keep doing over and over again so let's guess the number between 1 and 100 uh 50. no and i've got a 1 and 100 chance of getting it right so what would make this more fun well how about if i had more than one guess now you see there's a repetition there so it's a loop involved and the only loop we know at the moment would be a for loop so let's just make a few changes here what i'm going to do is come over to here and before the guess i'm going to say print um, have 10 um, turns to guess a number between 1 and 100 and close off my string okay so now down here instead of it just being one guess I'm now going to say for one in one in range 10, which is going to give me 10 guesses. I'm going to say indent all this. Tab radio. So if guess equals number, that's correct. Else is that's there. And um, print incorrect. And I'm going to say try again because it's going to don't want it to make that after the first one. So I'm going to get rid of that. Incorrect. Try again. Um, close it off and then outside the loop once we've finished we can say print um, the correct number was number radio so what are you complaining about oh the extra inverted commas there we go so let's see how that runs now bang oh for oh sorry for i not one in range there let's run Okay, you have 10 turns to guess the number between 1 and 100. Guess the number between 1 and 100. I'm going to say 50. Right, incorrect. Okay, how about 75? Incorrect. 25? Incorrect. 12, 34, 57, 12, then again. I'm going to keep going until I run out of goes. And I got it incorrect. Okay. So that's all good, but that's still just kind of randomly guessing a range of 100. I've got 10 guesses in there, so I've got like a 1 in 10 guess. 1 in 10 chance of actually guessing the number correctly. So let's improve that a bit. Let's use our, our if statements, etc. Let's say, well, wait a second. How about if I come into here and if I say guess number, if I change this from just being an is else, else, if I say 
Right. If guess is greater than number, that means my guess is greater than number, then I've gone too high. So I need to say print. Um, let's make it clear. Guess too high. Right, yo. Then making an elif. So, okay, first off, if it's greater than, if the guess is greater than, but then I'm going to say, well, that's not the case. And what if, if guess is less than number? I can say print guess uh, guess to low. I'm going to put a full stop there. Right. Guess too low, um, and then if it is correct, so if it's not too high, and if it's if it's not greater than, it's not less than, it must be equal to. So I can just say else, and then just go print correct. Because again, if it's not too high, and it's not too low, the only place it can be is, is, is in the right spot. Get rid of this extra else, which I don't need, and then print correct. And then say the number was at the end there. Right. So that if I run this now, I'm gonna say you have ten turns. Why have I got an extra space there? Get rid of that. Right. Ten turns. Guess the number between one and one hundred. Let's say fifty. Yeah, the guess is too low, so let's say seventy-five. The guess is still too low, let's say eighty-seven. Um guess is too high, somewhere between seventy-five and eighty-seven. Um so let's say eighty-one. Correct. Yeah, it's correct. But it's still asking me to guess. And that's because I've got 10 goes. Because it is what we call a counted loop, a for loop. So I have to just keep trying to guess here. And it's an invalid input, which I tested there, which gets me out to the end. So what we want to do is we want to try to have a different loop. As opposed to having a set number of loops, we want it to loop until a particular condition. Now, the two different types of loops that we have you have what is called a counted loop, which is our for loop, which we're doing, which, which ca counts how many times a loop happens, and it only happens the number of times that has been chosen in the for statement. Or we have another one, which is a condition loop, which will keep looping until the condition changes. So think about this if you're dealing a game of cards. If I'm dealing a game of poker where everyone gets five cards, then I'm using a for loop. I will deal out to every person five times because I know how many cards are going to be there. But then, instead, if I was playing a game of Snap, where I'm just dealing out to how many people are there and just keep going until the deck is finished, I just keep dealing until there is no more cards left. That means the condition of any card. So I say, is there cards left? Yes, there's a card left. That's true. I will deal to the person. Is there a card left? Yes, I will deal to the next person, etc., 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 and keep going. So that's our two different types of loops. You have our loop, which is a counted loop, which we use as for loops. And then the loops, which are conditions in Python, are our while loops. So let's see how I would try this with a while loop instead. So I come into here and I say number random, and I'm going to get rid of the for loop. Rightio. And then I'm going to get rid of that and change it into a while loop. So I'm going to say while guess is not equal to number. So, while the random number and what the person has guessed is not equal to each other, then I just want you to keep going. Rightio. Now, let's just wait a second. At the moment, if I try to run this, it will actually come up with an error. I'll run it and I'll show you what the error says. Oh, look at this. Name error, name guess is not defined. Because this is the first mention of the variable guess and it hasn't got a value because you see here, we get the value of guess in here. Now I can either put that outside or I can just start with guess equaling zero. And because guess is outside of the one to 100 range, it, it will never actually reach the number, meet the number anyway. So now if I run this, let's run this and see, right? You have 10 guesses. Okay, again, let's try 50. Right here, too low, so I have to be higher. So I'm going to say 75. Um, it's still too low, I'm going to go again, 87. It's still too high, I'll come to 81. It's still too high, so I'm going to come down lower, 81, let's say 78. Too low, 79. Correct, the number was 79. 
So you can see that it's gone through the actual process of going through and guessing until I got to the point where my guess is actually equal to the number, in which case the guess is going to be equal to the number. So it's going to be false, and then it exits the loop and comes out here. Now, if you want to check that through, work your way through using the F7, using our debugging code in F7, and see all your functions, see all your variables, see all the values, see how it works. Step your way through. And then once you've done that, you can now work on lesson five, exercise four. Okay, catch you later.